This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. Okay, so let's get started building our category model. Now, as we work through building our tables, it will get quicker as we work through because we will start to essentially copy and paste previous code because we will be creating very similar fields in other tables. So at the start, it will seem a bit slow. I will take you through every single step and try to explain everything that we do. But like I said, it will get quicker as we work through each table. So first of all, we need, need to decide where we're going to put the models. Now, I think personally, it should be in the core folder because it's related to apps and all our apps will be inside of this folder. Whereas FK Commerce folder is just related to um, more global, um, more globally, our application, our FK Commerce application, whereas core is going to be more specific to certain elements of this inventory management system. So I'm going to place it in there. Uh, you can put it wherever you like. It doesn't really matter at this point, but I think it's more logically placed in there. So I make a new file called models.py. So here we are using SQL Alchemy to manage, connect, manage, and work with the database. So we need to work with SQL Alchemy and utilize its patterns and ways of working and building models or tables in this case. So we are gonna to need to bring in some tools from SQL Alchemy so we can start to describe our tables in our database. So let's go ahead and first of all, from core, we're going to need to import the database um, and we're creating an alias as DB. Okay, so that's going to give us access to SQL Alchemy's features so that we can start to actually describe a new what is defined maybe as a model in this case. So what we're doing now then is we're actually going to describe a table in our database. And we do that as a class, so an object oriented programming class. So every class in OOP needs a name. So this is referring now to the category table that we're going to be building. And then we need to bring these uh, resources in. Now remember from core, so from core import database, where the hell is that coming from? Remember that when we initiate this folder, we have the initialization file, and that's going to, to initialize SQL Alchemy. So we're accessing that resource now here in our models. And now we're going to use that through this um, alias that we created here. So this is the same as database. I've just um, summarized it or just made it a little bit smaller, abbreviated it to make it easier to use in the code. So db, I want to do db and dot, this is a, a model. So basically I'm just telling SQL Alchemy, okay, here's my model. This is my first table that I'm going to be building. So I can give it a table name. So let's call this um, double underscore there equals uh, category. So I'll give it a name. That's my table name. And now I can describe the fields inside of this table. So first up, I need to build a primary key. So a primary key field is a field that uniquely identifies individual records that we insert into this table. Now here we're going to be utilizing the integer and it's gonna be a primary key, Oh, underscore key. So we define it as a primary key equals true. Okay, so notice that we've got these uh, underlines here. So these are resources. So the idea here is that we're using terminology um, that SQL Alchemy understands. So it can translate this into SQL code, which can then be executed on the database so it can perform the operation of actually building or after that point, uh, changing the category table, making changes. So what we're going to need to do here is bring in some resources from SQL Alchemy. So from SQL Alchemy, we need to bring in these tools. So we're using the column and the integer. So what we've done now is we've created a new field within the category table. It has a name of ID, the field has a name of ID, and then we specified the data type. So the data that's expected to be found in the database in this tables column or field 
is an integer, which is a whole number. Okay, so we just continue. So next up, just following the design that we demonstrated or showed, shown you, showed, showed you in the previous tutorial, uh, let's go for another column. Um, now you might see different approaches if you look online uh, or if you have different learning materials, how to actually construct or define a table. It can be slightly different uh, or you can create it slightly differently to this. So the structure of it, how you bring in, you can see here that I've created an, an alias. So that might not always be the case. Again, you might not define it as column or you might import column in a slightly different way. So it's all the same ultimately in SQL Alchemy, but there are just different approaches. So you might see this um, described in a slightly different way. The syntax might be slightly different. So here I'm going to define the string length. So the whole point here is I'm defining the maximum length of this string in this field. And that will help me potentially save space in my database. If I define it too long, it means that I've allocated too much space to this field and potentially that creates a very large database with um, not much information in it. So that can waste space. So I'll go ahead and make this unique true. So that means that every single record in this database table, the name must be unique. So in every single record I include, the name must be unique throughout the whole table. So add unique to that because I don't want to um, have a category that has the same name as another category. So that's just something that I have set out as a requirement in my system. Obviously you don't see that, you didn't know that, but I'm just trying to expand and uh, make you think a little bit more uh, in depth about the fields and how you might use them within your system. This will be a key component of designing your table, understanding how the data, um, the constraints of your data and how best to describe it in your table so that it meets the requirements of your application. Plus it provides um, and prevents any potential errors in your system. If you're expecting the name to be unique and it's not, then potentially within your code that might cause problems. So we've set that out, nullable equals false. So it has to be entered. So if we add a new record into the category table, it means that if we don't include the name, then it's going to return an error. So it has to be included. Right, so now we can start copy and pasting. So next up, we need to describe the slug. So we'll set the slug a little bit larger, say 200. And then again, it's unique and nullable false. So it must be included. So what exactly is our slug? So let's imagine we had the domain name shot.com. Okay, so we want to access categories. And how we do that is by typing in the category. So let's go for uh, close, for example. So what we do is a user and the front end would type this into their browser. And then in the back end, we would strip out this name here, which is a category name. And then we could use that category name to then query the database to return all the um, products in the close category, for example. So the problem we have here is that some categories might have a double name. So that means that potentially um, there is going to be a space. If we were to use the category name, there would be a space here. Now we can't use spaces in a URL and there are other special characters we can't use in a URL. So uh, we need to append that potentially with maybe a, a dash. So what we've created now is if this was one category name without the dash, we've now converted that into a slug, a URL friendly name. So that's what we're doing here. In the slug, we're going to store the name of the category, but as a URL friendly um, name so that we can use that in the URL to potentially then strip out and then use to, to query the category table. Now, most categories will just have one name, but there will be instances where potentially um, we will want to use the slug uh, to slugify the name of the category to make it URL safe. Right, so next up is active, active. Uh, so this is a Boolean field, a true or false field. So this is gonna be utilized. Imagine we were going to uh, insert a new record into the category table. We wouldn't necessarily want it viewable straight away by the, by the viewer at the front end. So 
we set this, uh, oh, hang on a second. We set this uh, field to false so that when we query all the categories, it doesn't return any categories that are turned off or set to false. So let's set the default equals false. So that's the default option for this Boolean field. We're going to need to bring that resource in. So let's go for that. Okay. So that's a Boolean field. We are building relational databases. You may be new to relational databases. Um, I didn't want to include uh, the design process because that would have taken us another hour and a half. And then we would need to then learn the underpinning knowledge of databases. So foreign keys and uh, one-to-ones and many-to-many -many relationships. So the whole idea is to try and learn as we work through this, the basic concepts of databases and how to uh, define relationships. So here we're going to define a foreign key, which is a way of creating a relationship between tables or within the same table. And here we're going to create a very special type of foreign key relationship because it's a, a self-referring foreign key. So probably not the best one to start off with if you are new to databases, um, but I will try and explain it for you. So here we're going to create this new column called parent ID. And this is going to be an integer. And we're going to define this as a foreign key. And we then define the field for that foreign key in this case, because it's a, a self-referring foreign key. So we're referring to, in this case, the category ID. Right, so let's bring in the foreign key resource. Okay. Right, so let me explain what's going on here and why we need this parent ID. At the moment, we've created a, a table. So let's see if we can draw this table very roughly. Uh, so we have the ID field, and then we have the name. I'll just do the name, we won't do the slug. So this is our table. This is how it would look like potentially in our database as a table. And then we have the parent ID. Okay, so we have this parent ID, which is a foreign key over to the ID. Okay, so let's imagine, for example, we add some a new record into this category table. It would have an ID, maybe a one, a name. So let's call this a uh, name uh, close. Okay, so that's my category name. And then the parent ID where well, there's nothing there. Right, so then I go ahead and I build a new category. Now this category is associated to close. So let's go for boots. Okay. Now I'm saying that uh, this category boots, I should have maybe done trousers or t-shirts or something, but you get the idea. So this category is associated to close. Okay. So to make that association, to make that link, what I'm going to do is add some additional data. So I've created this parent ID field as a foreign key. So I'm going to say that this boot is related to the um, category close. This category close has an ID of one. So what gets inserted here in the parent ID field is number one. So that allows me then to build a relationship between this category and the first category. So if I were to query this table now, I could grab the data related to the boots, I could inspect the parent ID, and then I could use that number, because remember, this is a unique ID that re is related to and identifies individual products, or sorry, categories in this table. I could use that ID to then find out which categories is associated to boots. In this case, it's number one. So I could use that, and then I could find out is, ca um, is connected to or related to the closed category. So what I'm building here is a hierarchical structure potentially. So at the top is uh, the, uh, the clothes category. And now what I've done is I've created a subcategory of, of boots. So I can take it a step further. Of course I could. So um, I could then build a, another record in this, in this table, um, give it an ID of three, and then maybe a subcategory of boots. Um, I can't think of a subcategory of boots, uh, but uh, it might be uh, it might be hard boots. I can't think of a subcategory hard boots. All right, so this is a subcategory of boots. So what I do now in the parent ID, this would be number two. So when I query the database now, I could work out that hard boots has a parent ID of two, 
I could then utilize that to identify its parent category. And then I could probably also then, once I found that out, I could then work out what the subcategory of that is to find the root category. So I use all this information that we collect and create in the table to build this hierarchical structure. So what I have now is a, another layer of this hierarchical structure to the to the hard boots <laughs> and so on. OK, so I am building um, this hierarchical structure. Now, I may have other things. Whoop. I may have other categories, which is associated close. So then this obviously then streams off to somewhere else and so on. Hopefully that gives you a visual idea of why we're using this field, what's going to be stored in it and then how we're going to use it to actually then um, help us query this table and identify the different layers of this hierarchical structure that we are creating. Last of all, I'm going to include this method, which is used to define a string representation of the object. So very briefly, imagine we did have this data in our category table and I went ahead and queried this data. So pretend I make a query. I say I want to grab all the data from the category table where the ID uh, equals one. Okay, so I make this query and then what happens is that this query then returns this close object. Now this object, when it returns, if I were to view it maybe in the terminal, um, the object would have a name of, for example, one, two, three, four, whatever. Okay, it would be some random string. Now, what's really handy is that if I were to return this record from the, the database, um, that object would be named in some way, which would help me understand what this object represents. So utilizing the string representation function, it allows me to, when I return an object from the database, it returns it and it displays it in some sort of human readable form. So in my function I've just generated, I've specified to return the name. So this object from the database will returned, be returned and use the name or the field name to specify the name of the object. So in this case, it would say uh, close, for example. So on the screen, it would um, I can view it as close. And that's just a, a nice way to return some objects and have it so it's human readable. So this is going to help us uh, control how instances of that class, in this case, the category table here, the category class, are represented as strings. Uh, this can be helpful for debugging, logging, or displaying objects in a human readable format. Now, something that we're going to not include at this stage is the relationship function. So in SQL Alchemy, we generally define the relationship function uh, to or it is used to establish the relationships or describe the relationships between tables that we might have. So we will start to include that once we start querying the tables.